and all the way across the line you've got orange little coals you're good all right that sound is not the fan That sound is the rocket stove running on pellets. And the basement is warm. So what we might do is go ahead and let the pellets, let the pellets die out. And then while the chimney is still warm, I can go ahead and get the fire started with the pellet tube and the pellet hopper off. still have a little bit of live coals in there and I wanted to show you what it looks like see there's the bottom we're gonna lift it out this is the plate this right here is oh, the wait. plate where did we put it I'm just gonna put it over here so they say with the rocket stove, you want to have long twists of paper and teeny, teeny, tiny pieces of wood. And I never start a fire like that. I found that I could cut back my stove cleaning by 75% um, by using cotton fabric to start my fires instead of paper. All right, so when you're starting a fire, not with pellets, you need to take out your grate. The purpose of the grate is to hold the pellets up so the air can flow through the stove still. Now the chimney is still warm and that makes a difference. I found with my rocket stove out in the cabin, if I don't have enough wood in there, I find that my draft will suck the flame off the wood. So I have a little bit of fluff from the dryer I'm going to take just a little bit of this and see how it does. Again, because the chimney is already warm, I should just be able to start this right away. The lid needs to go back on because that does not increase draw. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and light it. I'm just going to have faith in it that it's just, it's just a rocket stove. Okay, we've got some issues with smoke coming out. All right, now you see we don't have any smoke. First little lesson I learned, I had a piece of wood that was not descending. So you need to look and make sure that your wood is actually in contact with the coals or your fire will go out. I didn't have to restart it. I just had to bump the wood so that it shifted down and was in contact again. The opening here, the lid here, is really, really, really hot. Even using like a hot pad holder, I totally burned myself and the lid stuck. The lid went on a little bit skewed and then I couldn't get it to come up. I couldn't get it to go down. I had to use one of the pieces of wood to like smack it down. It's definitely keeping the basement warm. I'd say we're about 67 in here right now. I do have to come and check on it and put wood in it about every half hour in order to keep it going. So the Elmira stove upstairs, I can put three logs like that in and leave it for an hour or two. It'll go down to coals, I'll put another log in, but I don't really have to think about it very often. 
Darwin stove I have to feed once an hour, once every hour and a half, about the same as the Elmira. All right, we are five hours into this burn and it is finally willing to keep going when it has a small log in it. All right, so here we are about 45 minutes later it has gone all the way out. It does not like full-size logs at all. Does not care for them. I did not put the fire out. It put itself out. Our fourth try, not the stove's fault, but my fault. We had to go out and get some very small dry pieces and run it like that for an hour. And now we can put the big pieces in, but we have to be very careful that they don't get stuck in the feed tube because um, if they're too big they don't settle down right they don't they don't feed down correctly because they're too stout not because they're stuck in the tube but just because of uh, they just didn't they they needed a little bit of assistance to work them their way further down the tube one thing is make sure you're not putting something in that would come out the top of the tube it needs to be short so it's not a big deal just to like you know go like that and wiggle it around the the tube itself is not hot at all um, and you can see the coals and everything down there it's putting off quite a bit of heat good job yeah Kai's the one who came down it, and restarted it is hot from here down but up here it's show me again it's hot from here down it is hot but from like right here you can still touch it yeah so it's very interesting. I'm intrigued. Now, this stove with the pellet hopper did great. It kept the basement warm. It, it just chugged away and everything was great. We went through a lot of pellets, but it's meant to be a pellet heater. So yesterday, when we lit the fire with cordwood, because I wanted to see how that would work, because I really like to be self-reliant, I like to use cordwood, I found that this was the biggest piece of wood that we could put into the batch box. It did not seem to affect the draft to put in a bigger piece. It seemed to be that without very, very small pieces of wood, the fire didn't have enough surface area to burn. So these pieces were much too big to keep it burning hot. Once I was using these pieces, the stove would cool down, it would keep going, but it would get very sluggish. The pieces that it really liked were half an inch, eighth of an inch. That was the size that it really, really liked. It liked legitimate kindling. Now, in order to keep the stove hot with cordwood, I had to put that tiny, tiny kindling in and come and refeed it every half hour. It, it stayed hot, but not as hot as it did with the pellets. And it's very tedious to sit there and chop kindling down to that tiny size, knowing that the, the biggest piece that I can put in is this piece. And that while this is burning, I have to keep putting the tiny kindling in. Because of that, because of needing to put the wood in that much, I, I don't know if you would ever be able to attach this to a bench and have it be realistic in a day in, day out heating scenario. The reason for that is most people don't wanna stop every half hour to refeed their stove and it takes hours for that bench to heat up. If you don't mind the expense of pellets, then I think attaching a bench to this stove would be awesome. You'd have enough heat, you'd have enough um, fuel, and you wouldn't have to check on it more than once every like couple, three hours because the pellet hopper would be full and it would just keep heating things. So running the stove with pellets with a bench on the side, I think would be amazing. If you can't afford pellets, I don't think that this is the most economical way to go. 
As far as house heating and fast heating of a large space, my Elmira stove beats this stove. When I get up to start the fire in the morning upstairs, uh, once I have the fire going, it takes about five minutes to have our upstairs living space warm. The reason for that is the surface area. My Elmira stove is a large stove. It has a lot of surface area for that heat to leak out of. This stove is a small stove. It has a very intense heat, so it has a more complete combustion, but a lot of that heat goes up the chimney. For people who want a backup heat source that's easy to store the fuel and doesn't need a lot of babysitting, I think this is a great stove. If you could have a pallet of pellets in your basement for when you're needing to have off-grid heat, it's a great peace of mind, at least in my climate, where it's very cold for a very long time in the winter, to know that you can keep your family warm. You have a way to boil water, cook food, all this kind of thing on a rocket stove and not be irritating your neighbors with billowing clouds of smoke. One thing about rocket stoves, this stove is no exception, is that the smell that comes off the stove is not smoke. It just smells like warm metal. And outside, you can't tell that there's a stove going because it doesn't smell like wood smoke. You're not gonna smell pine, you're not gonna smell Christmassy smells. You might smell something that smells a little tiny bit metallic, but it doesn't smell like wood in any way. So these are really nice if you have neighbors that are offended by your self-reliant tendencies because they would never know that you have a wood stove. They won't see a billow of smoke. They might see white steam come out the top of the stove if you're burning cordwood, but they won't see dark smoke. For those who are wanting a UL certified stove and they want a really clean burn and they want it to be convenient, uh, I think this is a great stove because you can just store pellets in the corner of your basement and uh, you know just use it. If you want to try rocket stoves and masses and you kind of want to be able to play with materials and whether it's a horizontal batch box or a vertical batch box or size, you need to just know the right ratios. In order to get that information, Erica and Ernie have their book, but also Paul Wheaton has courses over at Permies that teach you what the rules of rocket stoves are and what the rules of rocket mass benches are.